This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. With me is John Cameron, Richard Fields, and with our guest, Tim Everett of the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast yeah. and a pilot of out of uh, San Diego in California. San Diego. Gentlemen, last week we talked about the Russian opposition leader, Alexei. Well, Richard, can you help me with his last name? Nav Navalny or something like that. Navalny. Oh. Navalny. Thank you. I always I butcher that. Alexei Navalny. He was going to turn himself in to uh, the Russian authorities to catch everybody up. He was attempted assassination attempt, and he was flown to Germany. He recovered, and he said he was going to go back, which surprised me. Why would you go back to Russia? Well, he flew back to Russia, was promptly arrested, had an overnight hearing at a police station, and now he's in jail for 30 days with no contact with anybody until they have a normal, regular hearing. Hmm. It's... I just kind of wanted to give everybody an update on what was happening because I don't understand other than the fact that, you know, your own personal safety is not the only thing you can threaten. And so maybe that's why you would go back. I don't understand why you would go back to Russia under that circumstance. Well, perhaps he, you know, believes in the, the larger purpose of uh, uh, more uh, individual freedom, reform, whatever in, in Russia, uh, as opposed to his own personal safety. I mean, you would almost have to be uh, that in order to be an opposition leader against Putin in any case. Yeah, yeah Putin, you know, being, being on the wrong side of Putin in a country that's completely controlled by Putin, almost almost like being a Republican in Hollywood, you know? I mean, it's it's bad. It's bad. You don't want to do that. But, yeah, I don't understand why he went back. It's He was martyring himself, it, which was what my comment was last week, that it seemed like he was martyring himself. But then it occurred to me, I guess, last night as I was reading the story that, you know, there's friends and family still in Russia. So it's, you know, his own personal safety is not the only thing you can threaten. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, maybe that's why you go back, you go face three and a half years in a Russian prison versus, you know, your friends and family having to face 10 years in a Russian prison. You know, it may be more, maybe something you're willing to, to do because I probably would if that was mm -hmm. my choice. Yeah, so, and in Soviet Union, I'm, I'm, you know, it's the, the people are there, they're in power. They're part of the. They're one of the oligarchs. They're you know, you know, rubbing elbows with Putin. In the minute they decide they don't like Putin, something, something Putin's done, they get Jack Maud. You know, they they disappear for a while. All of a sudden, you know, instead of being a shining light of uh, Russian success, they're uh, an embezzler. So, um, you know, so I think we're we're seeing some of that kind of, same kind of stuff. You know, happen in the states, unfortunately. But uh, you know, it's maybe we're 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 a little slicker at it now than they are. But uh, my hats yeah, off little, to them for going back. My hats. We're off a little more subtle. Back. Yeah, it's there's some courage yeah. there, but yeah, you just I'm just kind of worried about what they were threatening with. So anyway, we'll yeah. move on to California disaster. The EDD is an ongoing, continued disaster. Um, millions. One point. I think the last count was 1.4 million people were pushed off of EDD. Um, not pushed off, I guess. They're suspended. Their payments were suspended while they reevaluated themselves. God, they got their, what is it? Oh, what did they call it? I actually had to go through the process myself. Had to re-verify my ID. They verify your identity because they said it was commit, uh, accounted to fraud or connected to fraud or potentially connected to fraud. Mm -hmm. And then you have to, because it took so long to do that, then you have to recertify because the system took so long to get you uh, verified. It's an absolute mess, and I called the. I actually called my uh, assemblyman and talked to someone in his office, and they don't even know what's going on. Nobody has any idea. It's just yeah, well, we can maybe be able to help you fix it. Give us a call if you can't get it resolved. Hmm. It's insane that no one knows what's going on. The EDD is an absolute disaster, and I feel bad for the average worker at EDD because this is a disaster decades in the making, and the politicians made it, not the hmm. average person at DDD. I agree. Yeah, the EDD has been a disaster forever. And they're, um, I th I th correct me if I'm wrong, but they've, they've had a couple hundred million dollar contracts let for upgrading their system. And I think they're using still using COBOL or Fortran or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's but it's, uh, um, you know, these are, this is the, 
you know, the type of government that maybe as well as EDD works, they can help out the upcoming administration on the distribution of vaccine. Um, you know, based on that, uh, human beings will have mutated enough by the year 2423 that um, we don't have to worry about the vaccine. You know, I, I like to take a little bit more of a global view of uh, EDD and all other uh, agencies of the government which are there to help us. Uh, they don't. Uh, all they do is they take our money, cut off 80% off the top and give us the give us 20% back. That's all that any uh, welfare agency or unemployment agency or uh, helping agency is capable of doing because it's the bureaucrats that and the politicians that end up with the lion's share of the uh, the tax money or the inflation de derived money that that funds the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and and of course the reason we have an unemployment problem in the first place is no reason other than government action. The most recent government action being the, the being the lockdowns, which have been proven, which have been which are uh, statistically, empirically, uh, almost no question that they are totally ineffective as far as having any uh, any uh, beneficial uh, impact upon the coronavirus. Well, that's just the latest one. I'll agree with with Richard uh, again. I hate to do that so often on the show. Usually, I like to disagree with him, but in this case, I think he's right. Um, year, Thirty years ago, maybe even forty years ago. Uh, somebody looked at the numbers dumped into what they, they called welfare back then. I don't know what they call it now. And they said if they just dumped all that money electronically into a computer system and had it send out checks uh, to families of four, not that there's many nuclear families of four that were on welfare, that I'll get $40,000 a year. And this was back when $40,000 a year was actually above the median income for this country. Um, but if you look at what they're getting now, if inflation adjusted, it would be like $100,000. There, as Richard said, the, the bureaucracy slices off all the money, uh, just like they do in the school district. It goes in there and half of it goes to administrative costs and union dues and pensions and all the rest of that. And they, when they ask you for money, they bring you into the classroom and point at mold in the ceilings, you know, the, the Government lives off pointing at the mold in the ceilings, but they're the ones, and to add to what Richard said about this latest crisis, you look at all the barriers to employment in the state of California. You look at all the labor laws. You look at all the licensing. What is it in California? Upwards of 40% of people need some kind of license to have a job. Anyway, so yeah. government causes the problem and then messes up its own solution to the problem it caused. Yeah, it's... Hey, Tim, are you facing that kind of issues down there in San Diego with the EDD? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I'm so essential that they uh, decided uh, to, to let me keep working instead of locking me down. But uh, I'm, I'm sure it is, since it's part of uh, the whole California system. I'm sure people are having issues. I, I do not know uh, any anecdotal evidence down here regarding that. Uh, but I got a kick out of the article linked that, that you sent to uh, to us all, uh, where the the lady, the beautician was uh, lamenting, you know, oh my gosh, if something, if they don't give me some money here pretty soon, I'm going to have to do go uh, do some illegal under the table beautician work, mm -hmm. and uh, so I was thinking, <laughs> better get busy because you know, <laughs> there are a lot of other people that are doing it. So um, yeah, I just um, I talked to. Uh, some family members whose uh, names will go unmentioned because I don't want to incriminate them in this horrible, horrible crime of getting your hair cut. But they did go to a black market barber and the and uh, my barber in El Centro, where I where I go uh, to get my hair cut. He, he does the same thing. They blacken the, the front part of the barber shop or the beauty salon or whatever it is with drapes or or however whatever they use and then you got you have to go through the back door of mm. course so it's it's just it's like <laughs> it, it's just like speakeasy. like a speakeasy speakeasy, it's a speakeasy. Yeah. yes only uh only richard it, wouldn't know about those yeah uh, uh, yeah exactly yeah so speakeasy from prohibition uh, era 
where uh, the government's uh, idiotic uh, laws, in this case, lockdown laws, are uh, are causing, you know, it's not, it's not like, you know, you're either going to get your hair cut from your, your significant other or from some illegal black market barber or whatever, you know, in, in either case, you know, with your significant other, you're violating, you know, you're getting your hair cut not by a licensed barber, heaven forbid, <gasps> that I know, oh, the horror of doing that. And so here we are, we're, we're causing Americans that are normally, you know, law abiding that should be able to be uh, working right now. And so maybe this will seg seg segue, segue, segali way into mm -hmm. The uh, the issue regarding uh, the 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 one um, in your uh, again in your email to us uh, there was one study that that was mentioned uh, that showed that lockdowns are ineffective in in uh, stopping the transmission of this virus and and they are I decided that I would go go look over at the fat emperor which is um, Oh, gosh, I can't remember his name. Found out about him through Tom Woods, one of his podcasts. Guy's brilliant. He has, it, it, when I heard this just a few weeks ago, this uh, podcast, it was 22 different uh, studies that, that all came to the same exact conclusion. And now it's up to 27 over at the Fat Emperor uh, website where he um, or where uh, there are all these different countries, different studies uh, I looked for the one that you linked to, and I, I'm not sure if it's there or is not there. It's kind of hard to tell. I did it real quick. But um, anyway, yeah, I mean, oh, if we follow the science, let's follow the science. Because the science says that lockdowns do nothing to stop the spread of the virus. So, oh, oh my gosh, don't you follow the science? Come on now, what, what's what's wrong with the uh, you govern government uh, type peeps like new scum? Why why don't you just new follow scum. the science and uh, <laughs> and just open everything back up? Then the EDD and its issues and and the people trying to defraud the EDD out of their money, like the guys in prison or in the halfway house, the guys in uh, Uganda. Hey, there's another segue into an upcoming topic on today's show. The, yeah. All those people are, um, uh, you know, trying to defraud the government. And so now they're so careful, <laughs> you know, the yep. people that sh should be getting the help are not. But it was all caused because somebody didn't follow the science and somebody decided to lock the whole stupid state down. I can't believe it. Oh, well, wait, you know, you know there, there is a solution. It's uh, the solution that John and I have taken, which is just to go shaggy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. And hand, I have, yeah. and James. Well, you can't test. see my, you can't see the top knot in the back. It's yeah. down to my butt now. It's, yeah. It's well, so, wait, that's like no, James. it's not no, there. It's not yeah. James yeah, well, we are. We're going to, we're going to skip the hair thing for a minute because, you know, I'll start talking about how great my hair is and no one wants to yeah. hear that. Um, <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> but we are talking about the science and the lockdowns. That's the interesting thing is there was no science early on. And everybody right. says follow the science and there actually wasn't any science and everybody was making decisions based upon kind of theoretical science. Well, we now actually have real world science and the real world science says that the lockdowns don't really work. Well, part no, of the okay. reason they don't work is because they didn't take human activity into account that if you a burden carried uh, voluntarily is, is less heavy than one that's been forced upon you. So when you force people to lock down when, with laws, laws and rules and regulations, Rather than just say, hey, look, we're facing this, this crisis. We need you to limit your movement. Be careful when you go out. Rather stay, than just doing that. Stay home. Stay safe. Right? They give you all these kind of BS propaganda. They lie to you, tell you to follow the science that hasn't actually been done yet. Yeah. And then when you actually get science done, they, they tell you, call you a science denier. And you're saying, but I'm following the science. The science says that your lockdowns don't really work. They don't have an impact one way or the other. Well, you know, James, yeah. in, in that in that same website, I think he's the one. I, I, I hear so many different things because uh, Tom Woods has been on this COVID kick for a long time. But 
I'm not sure if for sure it's him, but uh, there have been other studies pr prior to this mm -hmm. whole thing, and they all concluded the same thing. So, so there, so there have been science, st scientific studies that have shown that lockdown type approaches to quelling a, vir a viral outbreak of something is is n ineffective. And I, I think it's, it's partly because of what James says, and it's also because, you know, that's what viruses do. They spread. I mean, they spread easily. And, uh, and it's particularly um, viral. Uh, uh, what is it? What is the word I'm thinking of? Um, it's easy really? to catch. Uh, yeah, it's easy to catch. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, people confuse people confuse uh, uh, quarantines with lockdowns. A quarantine actually would work. It's like yeah. the, little, the boy in the box yeah. with no uh, with no uh, access to any uh, any of the outside world because he's you know going to die if if he isn't totally quarantined. If you could quarantine everybody, that would, that would work. You know, you bacteria can't. you can't get through a solid wall. But in the real world, you can't quarantine. You have to eat. You have to get food, you have to uh, go about, you know, your business, you have to, you know, either either actually work or apply for your, your unemployment checks. You can't, you can't do it. It's, it's just it's simply not possible. Now, you've got uh, gendarmes in places like uh, England and uh, California who would try to force you to quarantine, but it, it's still not going to work because they can't, uh, they can't put that kind of, uh, uh, of uh, draconian, uh, 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 regulation on everybody and uh, every, everyone and everybody. It's just simply not uh, logistically possible. So yeah. uh, you can lock down as much as you want, but the germs are still going to get through the open door and the doors are going to open every once in a while. Yeah, and I'd like to add something to that. There's another, there's another level to this that, that we, we're maybe not talking about. When, when everybody, everybody I talk to on the left and the right and the smart people like us, in the middle where all the good thinking happens, the libertarian world. Um, <laughs> what this does is it makes, it makes people not listen to anything that the government says. Yeah. And maybe that's a good thing in general, but there are some times, there are some times where it'd be nice to listen to people who were the experts. The problem is that we're all now so distrustful of expertise that we don't even listen to real experts. And the real experts said very early on, this is lunacy. This group of people do not catch, or if they do catch, they don't get sick, the disease. Those are children, young people, young, healthy adults. This group of people are at risk. They're the obese. They're the aged. They're people with pre-existing conditions. Let these people, the people who don't get sick, do whatever they would like to do and protect the other people. But once again, the one size fits none government policy applied risk levels unscientifically. And so not only does did it not work because of the heavy top down approach, but it destroyed any validity at all that government has. I wanna know when somebody's gonna demand the death sentence for Fauci, because Fauci came out and said, you shouldn't use masks because they don't work. And then he came out and said, masks do work. He didn't say, I lied to you. But he should have said, I lied to you because I wanted to make sure that the medical professionals, the care workers, had enough masks. So now we've got this so-called so -called expert admitting that he lied to people. And we still don't know. There's a lot of studies that, that show that masks, masks don't work. But anyway, we're beating this to death. And I know James is over there, I think, itching to get onto another another subject i think well i'm sitting here deciding trying to decide who to talk about the ugandan election or if we want to talk about uh femas to the rescue, um, to the rescue. <laughs> FEMA, joe biden has said he's going to manage the hell out of this virus response and no, he's going to do that 100 years now <laughs> and, and he said that he's going to do that by sending in fema and national guard people to help with the vaccination and I'm going, well, in what experience in the last 30 years do we have that FEMA can do something like this in an even remotely competent fashion? I mean, FEMA is literally I, I, one I, of the I, worst organizations to, to rely on for this kind of thing. I remember uh, FEMA's stellar uh, performance during Hurricane Katrina. Hmm. What we need to do is put, put the real hero of Hurricane Katrina in charge of this, Walmart. Uh, you know, well, you know. Yeah. I think it's really it's, it's, it, there's a, a solution in plain sight. 
the states are pretty much in charge of the dis distribution of the, of the vaccine. And every each state is doing it differently. California is doing it incompetently. West Virginia, of all places, is doing it quite competently. They are not letting uh, the uh, vaccine go to waste by uh, expiring or getting too warm before it's used. Uh, they're not using a one, uh, you know, one contractor, a CVS or somebody like that, to do all of the work. They're basically letting uh, free market principles work. Whatever drugstore wants to get involved, whatever medical care practitioner wants to get involved in the process, West Virginia is saying, go for it. They have set up an essentially a quasi competitive uh, system in order to get the vaccine out quickly. Alaska has done something similar and they have the, the highest vaccination rates in the country. And it's just a, a, a really, really stark comparison to the centrally controlled systems like California and what Biden is proposing for it now for the entire country. What Biden is proposing is destined to not work very well. Yeah, well, we've seen the failure of top-down control on this whole thing from the start. It's just, it's been a complete abject failure of top-down control. And if, if there's one thing we all can take out of this, it's that. It's that, you know, our systems are either, they're either too big and too cumbersome to actually function in an emergency, or they're just incompetent. One of the two, maybe both. I think both. I'm voting <laughs> for, for, for both. And, I'm, you know, and the, and the other thing that happens here, you know, they're... Um, I was reading an article somewhere. I think Fee talked about uh, why um, they're not why the FDA is holding up, held up a perfectly viable um, vaccine that that worked uh, and worked on March 12th, I think. And uh, they got 25,000 volunteers to basically uh, expose themselves to the virus to make sure it worked, and and the FDA wouldn't approve it. And so it's basically type one error and type two error. Type one error is if you're, you say, go ahead with something and then a whole bunch of people die. And then when you're in a Senate hearing, you're, you can get very uncomfortable. A type two error is where you say, no, we can't let it out because it might be dangerous. And, and you're not called into that Senate hearing for making a really bad decision, but another 250,000 people die. So when you have bureaucrats in charge, their motivation is not getting the job done. Their motivation is keeping their job and not getting in trouble. So um, that's another reason for keeping bureaucracy out of this thing. Not that they ever will. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they know how. Now, we are going to switch gears one last time before the end of the show. We've got a comment from uh, one of our friends in Uganda, which actually brings us up to our, our uh, last topic. Uganda bans all social media access right before the election. They are now back online, and the president of Uganda won his re-election bid. It's like 58% to 39% or something. And, of course, the USA is saying they need to audit the elections. Well, and, I, I, you know, can you say hypocrisy? Uh, that's, that's my question. Hypocrisy. Uh, the United I States has, has decided to, in its wisdom, after the, uh, the uh, so-called insurrection at the Capitol, uh, earlier this month, they have decided that uh, the, the the social media companies, Yahoo, uh, not Yahoo, uh, Facebook, uh, uses Twitter, Yahoo. nobody uses Yahoo anymore. I'm dating myself. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, all the rest of them, uh, YouTube, all have, without exception, banned the president of the United States. Well, I don't want to hear uh, what Trump is tweeting about any more than anybody else does. But if the Organizations that control 90% of the of social internet traffic all act at the same time under fear that they will be regulated to, uh, out of existence or uh, uh, trust, uh, trust busted out of existence if they don't. That is a situation that we have to fear. We are experiencing 1984, 37 years too late, where the truth simply can't be spoken. Mm -hmm nor can the lie be spoken if it's in you know if, if it's not approved by uh, by the elites we have a situation where uh ron paul of all people who was no no pro trumper was kicked off of facebook we have a situation it was a where mistake. it was a mistake yeah i know it was a it was a mistake a lot right? of mistakes. it's a mistake that anybody is kicked off 
of Facebook or Twitter <laughs> for the very simple reason that if you have bad speech, hateful speech, incorrect speech, the best antidote is not censorship, but corrective speech, more speech. And what we're doing is we're saying if speech is bad by somebody's arbitrary definition, it must be banned. What we should be saying as a government, as a society, is that if speech is bad, it should be counteracted with, with good speech. Yeah, and that the, you talk about hypocrisy in Uganda. Um, when when the, the I think it was the president in Uganda said we're shutting down all social media uh, because they're promoting one side of the election, they're pro my opponent and not letting my stuff through. So you know basically they're censoring me. So I'm just shutting down all. And Twitter and Google were up in arms because. Everybody in Uganda has a right to, to be able to see all sides of an issue. So hypocrisy, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. Yeah. Tim? Yeah, I, I mean, what more can I say? I, I've told people that we're cheering the, the, um, the whole parlor thing. And, you know, um, the, Twitter should have should have got rid of uh, Trump uh, at the b very beginning, and he he probably would have been reelected because people wouldn't have seen what what craziness he he would utter on oh, I didn't even think on not so that. that makes sense yeah. uh, on not not such rare occasion either he would have had to go in front of uh, the cameras at, at a press conference like everybody else used to do back in the day, and so uh, it would have probably hopefully would have been a little more controlled. And uh, he, he would have hopefully been a little uh, muzzled by his uh, handlers. But uh, as a result of this whole Twitter thing, but, you know, I'm just I'm I'm kind of just playing both sides here. But <laughs> but the thing is, these people that that cheer this kind of stuff, uh, you know, are not going to be so cheerful. When, they're going to be a little butt hurt when they when it happens to them and their guys, uh, and it very well could. And and here's a, a situation with a little bit, you know, being Uganda. Remember Idi Amin Dada. Yeah. Idi Field Amin Marshal Dada. Dr. General Idi Amin Dada. Yeah. General. Yes. Yeah. Boy, what he a time that people. was. Yeah. Yes, he did. He did. Mm -hmm. Johannesburgers and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Anyway, so when it comes around to bite them, they're they're gonna have a different, they're singing a different tune. Yeah, they're well, gonna. one would hope. Yeah, one to end hope. the show, private companies have a right to do everything they want, but if they do it under political pressure, are they doing what they want, or are they responding mm -hmm. to political pressure, or are they buying future favors? You know, this kind of this kind of thing. It's or not. Are they, a, or are they saying like Zuckerberg does? Regulate me, please. Make sure that I don't have any competition. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's the thing. Regulate me. What it really means is regulate my competition because they yeah. can't afford to deal with the regulations. And with that, we are out of here. Thank you, gentlemen, for, for stopping by and for the all conversation. Right. And we would like thank you from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint. You can catch us on Thursdays at 8 o'clock. You can catch Tim on Mondays at 530. You can call, catch us all at LibertarianCounterpoint.com and on Facebook with all of that we'll see you next week and please remember to love everybody this is gail morgan thanking you for watching the libertarian counterpoint each thursday at 8 p.m channel 17 on comcast on youtube and on facebook we invite you to come again